We know New South Wales has had a tough couple of months. In fact, the fire season was horrific and one of the true heroes of New South Wales remains Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons. And with an eye to recovery, uh, I wanted to firstly um, thank and acknowledge him for his decade-long service in the RFS. Uh, his leadership, the way in which he pulled New South Wales through those difficult times was outstanding. And after having served uh, for a decade, for more than a decade, for 12 years as the head of the RFS, uh, Commissioner Fitzsimmons indicated to the government Government, he was retiring from that position. Uh, given his skills, given the level of respect he has in the community and given his understanding of what it takes uh, to recover uh, from a major disaster, uh, the New South Wales Government is very pleased to announce that Commissioner Fitzsimmons has accepted to take on the responsibility of being our Commissioner for New, new South Wales Resilience, uh, a new agency that will ensure now and into the future New South Wales is prepared but also is able to respond and recover uh, through major crises, be it COVID, be it cyber security, be it a whole range of things we may not foreshadow. Who would have thought that in 2020 New South Wales would be facing a pandemic? And we don't know the challenges of the future, but what I do know is that New South Wales, through New South Wales Resilience, Resilience New South Wales, will be able to focus on preparing and recovering from anything that comes our way now and into the future. It's really important for us to have a whole of government approach. And I really want to um, thank Commissioner Fitzsimmons for accepting this new role within the public service, which he will commence in a month. So he'll wind up his duties in the RFS over the next month and then commence heading up the new, new agency in New South Wales uh, in a month's time. Uh, again, to the people of our great state and our nation, I say thank you. Uh, we are seeing some early positive signs of the result of the restrictions we're putting in place. We want this to continue. But please also know what we're already thinking about and focused on recovery. We're already thinking about what we can do to support everybody, uh, support all of us uh, whilst we're more confined to our homes, but also uh, how we can look forward to the recovery phase. And of course, Commissioner Fitzsimmons and the men and women behind me will be instrumental in that process. I'll now ask uh, Commissioner Fuller from the New South Wales Police to give his quick update, then Dr McAnulty from New South Wales Health and then I'll allow Commissioner Fitzsimmons uh, to, uh, to also say a few words before we take any questions. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Premier. Can I start by acknowledging Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons for his leadership, not just over the last fire season, but uh, nearly 13 years at the helm. And in his new role, it will be a great pleasure to work with him uh, in the great challenge of recoveries. Um, from a New South Wales Police perspective, uh, we have 97 international flights to date back into Sydney Airport, some 4,500 uh, Australians in hotel rooms across Sydney. And Wednesday, we'll see the first hotel uh, close uh, and over 200 people will return home, which I think is a light to say that we are getting through this, um, you know, small steps. Uh, there are no cruise ships left in New South Wales waters other than the Ruby Princess, as you are aware. Uh, between the New South Wales Government and the Australian Government, we uh, contracted Aspen, which was an independent medical group who went on the ship. Uh, and they have delivered a report to uh, both federal and state government. Uh, between New South Wales Health, the New South Wales Police and uh, the emergency management team, a plan has been developed that will be around isolation on the ship uh, and then from that, from that 10 day period of isolation, we can then continue to work uh, with Carnival in relation to repatriation of the individuals on the ship. There are some 1,040 crew members on the ship from 50 different countries, uh, but nevertheless, we will continue to work with them closely. Obviously, the health and well-being of the crew members is essential. Another two crew members were taken off the ship yesterday, uh, requiring additional medical assistance, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, the ship itself will dock at Port Kembla shortly, uh, and the reason we need to dock it is because of the regular uh, supplies that need to go on the ship. Taking uh, sick crew passengers off at sea is a complex and dangerous task, uh, so the ship will be docked at Port uh, Kembla. We have used Port Kembla extensively over the course of this operation to refuel and resupply ships. Uh, so for mine, thank you to the Port Kembla uh, dock, uh, and we will continue to make sure there's the highest level of security uh, for the locals uh, down in southern New South Wales. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Just like to give you an update on the numbers. Uh, so, as of 8 p.m. last night, over 2,637 cases have been confirmed in New South Wales. And uh, it was pleasing to see we had 57 cases reported yesterday to 8 p.m., which is a drop from the previous day. However, there were fewer tests done as part of the weekend effect. So about around 2,500 tests were done, which is a drop on previous days. Uh, in total, we've had 121, uh, 401 people tested and excluded, and sadly 18 deaths uh, reported in New South Wales. There are two new deaths that occurred yesterday in an 86-year-old man and an 85-year-old man. And our condolences go out to the families of these uh, gentlemen. In total, uh, of the 2,637 confirmed cases, um, just over 1,600 have been acquired overseas, 595 locally acquired from a confirmed no or known case or cluster, and 397 cases locally acquired from an unknown contact, and 30 re 40 remain under investigation. Now, the important thing, because there has been a little drop-off in tests over the weekend, we want to encourage increased testing in those communities where we've seen um, even a few local cases of transmission. So we'd like, we're um, extending testing and encouraging doctors and patients who've got symptoms, so people with symptoms of acute respiratory infection, so cough, uh, shortness of breath, uh, sore throat or fever, in the areas where we've seen some evidence of local transmission to talk to their GP or go to a testing clinic um, for testing. So these areas are Broken Hill, Lake Macquarie, Manning, Waverley, Wallara, Ride, Macquarie Park, DY, Manly, Nowra and South Nowra, Byron and Port Macquarie. So as an added precaution, we want to make sure that we have access to testing in those areas where there may be some local transmission so we can find people early and make sure that they're in isolation and cared for and make sure that their contacts who may be at also risk of getting infection are aware and also placed in isolation to avoid any ongoing transmission. So the numbers we're seeing in the last few days have been really hopeful. Um, it seems that the actions we're taking in terms of case finding and contact tracing have been help working. But also importantly, the actions the whole community has been taking through social distancing um, and, uh, and so on have been really helpful in keeping the numbers from escalating. But it's too early to make too many uh, assumptions. We need to keep a very close eye on these figures, which we'll do.